Assalamu alaikum. Are you getting that special feeling? You must be because it's the night of Laylatul Qadr. Let's start off today with a Quran recitation because of course the Holy Quran was revealed on one of these amazing nights. After Quran today, we'll be listening to a story about the Prophet who was swallowed by a whale. It must be Prophet Yunus alayhi salam. Ayan Hassan and Amar Hussein Fazl will be joining us today with their mother, Sister Sara Fazl. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والسماء والطارق وما أجواك ما الطارق النجم الثاقب إن كل نفس لما عليها حافظ فلينظر الإنسان مما خلق خلق مما دافق يخرج من بين الصلب I hope you guys are doing well. Today we have a very exciting lesson. We're going to be learning about a very special someone and something he teaches us. But who are we going to be learning about? Everything we need to know is going to be in this box. We have three clues and these three clues might tell us who we're going to be learning about. But before we start, what should we always say when we greet each other? Boys, what should we say? Salam. Salam. Do you guys want to sing a salam song? Yeah. Are you ready? Can you get your waving hands ready? And if you guys know the song, you can sing along with them. Are you ready? Salam, everyone. Salam, everyone. Salam, everyone. We're so happy that you came. Well, we're very excited that you guys are here today. Are you ready to find out who we're going to be learning about? Are you boys ready? Yeah. Okay, we have a very special mystery box song. If you know that, you can sing along with us. Are you boys ready? Yeah. <laughs> 
I I've got something, something in my box, in my box, in my box. I've got something in my box. I wonder what it is. Okay. All right, Ayan Hassan is going to go ahead and pick our first clue. Are you ready, Ayan Hassan? Yeah. Okay, there's actually two in the first clue, isn't there? Okay, Ayan Hassan, what have you picked? Let's show everybody what number that is. That's a very big number. Do you know what this number is? 124,000. 124,000. Why, why is this number special in Islam? Who, who do we know that are 124,000 of them? Around about. Ayan Hassan? Prophet. Prophet. That's right. The person we're talking about today is a prophet. One of the 124,000. That's our first clue. The person we're going to be talking about is a prophet. Amar Hussein, would you like to pick the next one? You ready? What else is in here? What's that, Amar Hussein? A whale. A whale, you're right. And does anybody know what a whale is called in Arabic? Do you know? Yeah. What is a whale called in Arabic? Ayan, do you know? A hoot. A hoot. Can you say hoot? A hoot. A hoot. Can you guys say hoot? A whale in Arabic is called a hoot. Now, this is our second clue. The prophet we're talking about has a story that has something to do with a whale. Hmm. Do you remember any prophets, not your head if you think you know, who you know a story about a whale that has to do with him? Oh, Ayan Hassan, I think he knows. Are we ready for our last clue? All right. Ayan Hassan, would you like to pick our last clue? Let's okay. what it is. Are you ready? Aha. Ooh, we have an Arabic alphabet. Can you guys see that Arabic alphabet? Okay, so ready to put our three clues together. Let's get our thinking caps on. Are you ready? Put your thinking caps on. Screw it on tight. The person we're talking about today is a prophet. His story has something to do with a whale. And his name begins with this letter. Who do we think it is? What letter is this? Omar, do you know? Ayan, do you know? Do uh, you guys know at home? What letter is this? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So which prophet that has to do with a whale has a name beginning with yeah? Ayan, do you know? A uh, prophet Yunus. Prophet Yunus, that's right. Today we're going to be talking about Prophet Yunus. Now we're going to read a story called Saving the Mu'minin about the story of Prophet Yunus. A very long time ago, Allah sent Nabi Yunus to the people who lived in a city called Nainavah. These people worshipped idols. Nabi Yunus spent every moment trying to guide the people. He used to say to them, Worshipping idols is of no use because idols cannot help you. There is only one God, Allah. He made everything and only He can give you what you want. All he heard in return was, Go away, Yunus. You might be right, but our fathers have been doing the same thing for ages. Sadly, from the whole town, only two people believed in him. Nabi Yunus was very sad and upset by his people. He thought to himself, I am sure these people are never going to change. I have been telling them year after year to believe in Allah, and yet they do not believe. Why do they not see the truth? Then he cried out to Allah, O oh Allah, I am tired of these people who just do not listen. He then decided to leave them and go far away. So he walked towards the river and boarded a ship. Soon after Nabi Yunus left, the people of Nainavah began to get worried. They could feel that something really bad was about to happen. They went to a wise man for advice. He was one of the believers. Nabi Yunus loves you. He wants to save you from doing wrong because that makes Allah angry. But it is you who do not listen to his kind words, he said. The people cried out, What a horrible mistake we have made! We should beg Allah to forgive us before it's too late. The people left their town and gathered under the open sky. They called out to Allah with all their hearts. They begged and they cried. They didn't want Allah to be angry with them. They really wanted Nabi Yunus to come back. In the meantime, Nabi Yunus was still on the ship. The weather suddenly became stormy. 
The waves were so high that the ship rocked from side to side. We are all going to die! The men shouted. The captain said, "Someone on this boat is bringing us bad luck. We need to throw him overboard, or all of us will drown." The men looked at each other and said, "But who can it be?" We should cast lots," someone suggested. So they did. "It's Nabi Yunus. No, that can't be right. Let's do it again." "Nabi Yunus again? Let's try one more time," said the captain worriedly. If my name is cast again, it is Allah's will that I am thrown off the boat," thought Nabi Yunus, and that is what happened. Nabi Yunus was swallowed up whole by a giant fish. In the dark belly of the fish, he called out to Allah with all his heart. He begged and he cried, "Maybe I should have stayed with my people." I wish I could go back to them and keep telling them about my merciful Lord. Allah heard the cries of Nabi Yunus and answered his du'a. He tells us in the Quran, "We answered his prayer and saved him from the pain, and in this way we save the mu'minin." Thuf, the giant fish spat Nabi Yunus out onto the land. He was weak but safe. Allah made a pumpkin plant grow around him so that his body could be shaded from the strong rays of the sun. Soon Nabi Yunus was well enough to return to his people. When he arrived at Nineveh, he found that they had all stopped worshiping idols. What happened whilst I was gone? asked Nabi Yunus. The wise man explained, the people called out to Allah with all of their hearts, so he answered their prayers and saved them from pain. Nabi Yunus nodded his head. Smiled and said, and then and in this way he saved the mu'minin. The end. Okay, now I'm going to tell you a little story with a visual about Prophet Yunus. Would you guys like that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So Prophet Yunus was sent to a town of Nineveh by Allah to teach them about Allah. But the people, do you know what they did when he taught them about Allah? No. They said, Na 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 na. I don't want to listen to you. And they didn't listen to Prophet Yunus at all. How do you think that made him feel? Sad. Amma, how do you think he felt? Yeah. He felt sad. Yeah. Yeah, because nobody was listening to him. He kept trying and he kept trying, and nobody was listening to him. So, what would you guys do if nobody was listening to you and you're trying to talk to them? What do you think you would do? Uh, I I would walk away because because sometimes I do that in school when my friends are. Not being nice to me. Yeah, I would feel like walking away too. Would you, Amar? No, no. What would you do, Amar? I, I will stay. You would stay? Yeah. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> well, Prophet Yunus kept and kept on trying, but they just weren't listening. So he did what you and I would do, Ayan Hasan. He just went away. And what he did was he went to the boat and he found a boat that was leaving the town and he climbed in. And then, when they were in the water, do you know what happened? What? The water started getting really big, and waves were crashing, and the boat was going this way and this way. And all of a sudden, they knew something was wrong—that their boat was going to fall and everybody would drown. So they quickly tried to make the boat as light as possible. So they threw everything they had out of the boat, all the cargo and anything they could find that they didn't need. They threw it out of the boat. But still, the boat was crashing this way and that way, and crashing this way and that way, and they all got very scared. And then they decided this boat is still too heavy. So do you know what we're gonna have to do? Yeah. We're gonna have to throw out somebody on the boat. Yes.、Yeah. Is that a very good decision? No. But they didn't have a choice, did they? So what they did was they took some sticks and they said, "Everybody pick one stick. The shortest stick that person will have to fall off the boat, so that we can save the rest of us." And do you know who got the shortest stick? Who? Who do you think? Prophet Yunus. Prophet Yunus did. But the people on the boat and the captain loved Prophet Yunus so much because they could already tell he was so kind and he was such a good person that they didn't want him to fall. Off the boat, so they said, "Let's try again." And then the second time, who got the shortest stick? Prophet Yunus. Prophet Yunus did. And they're like, "No, no, 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 no! This must be a mistake. Let's try one more time."、Mm -hmm. And the third time, who got the shortest stick, Amar? Prophet Yunus. Prophet Yunus did. That's right. 
So then at the third time, Prophet Yunus said, if I've gotten the, th the shortest stick three times in a row, that's a sign from Allah. Allah wants me to be the one off the boat. So very sadly, they, the Prophet Yunus jumped off the boat as well and fell into the water. And once he was in the water, something very strange happened. A whale came swimming and he gobbled Prophet Yunus up. How would you guys feel if you were in a whale's tummy? Scared. Would you feel scared, Amar? How would you feel? I, I would go in there and I would feel scared. You would feel scared too? Yeah. Because what do you think the inside of a whale's tummy is like? Uh, is it nice being in a whale's no, tummy? No, I think it's very wet, slobbery and smelly. Oh, it probably is very smelly. <laughs> yeah. What else do you think it is, Amar, inside? Uh, Inside the whale's tummy, it's very. What do you think? Cold. It could be cold, maybe. Dark and it'd, damp. It'd be dark, yeah. Would you be scared, Amar? Yeah. I would be scared too, Ayang. Would you be scared? Yeah. I'm sure all of us would be scared. But Prophet Yunus didn't get scared and he didn't give up. Do you know what he actually did when he was in there? What? He prayed to Allah. He knew that Allah sent the whale and he knew that Allah made the whale eat him. And he knew that this was a lesson from Allah for leaving the people of Nineveh. So Allah, so Prophet Yunus, every day he did dua. He prayed to Allah. He said, I'm so sorry, Allah. I made a mistake. I shouldn't have left. Please forgive me. Please release me and I'll try again. And do you know what started happening inside the whale's tummy? You know how you said it was very dark? Yeah. It started getting brighter and brighter. The more he prayed, the more light started coming in the tummy of the whale. Allah was being so kind to him that he was helping make it bright in there for him so he wouldn't be so scared. I don't know about the smell, but it was definitely brighter in there. Oh. And so then, mm. Prophet Yunus, the more he prayed to Allah, the brighter it got and the easier it got for him in there. And when Allah was ready and he was satisfied and he knew Prophet Yunus was ready, he asked the whale to go to take him out. So the whale took out Prophet Yunus and then he came out of the whale's tummy. He went back to the town of Nineveh and the town of the people of Nineveh were so happy to see him and they realized we made a mistake. We should have listened to you. And so then when he came back, they all listened to him and they all started believing in Allah. What does that tell us? What lesson do you learn about this story, boys? What should we always do that uh, Prophet Yunus did? Uh, not to give up. I we should stay. never give up. We should stay. We should always, whatever we decided to do, never give up. Because there's always a reason you should be doing something. What else? When we make a mistake, Amar, what should we say when you've made a mistake? What do you think we should say? What if, for example, you buy by accident you broke somebody's toys what should you say to that person would you say sorry yeah yeah so say i would say sorry what should you say when you've broken somebody's toys i say sorry yeah we would say sorry exactly so when prophet and you can say a fuck <clears throat> ah that's what i was just gonna ask you in arabic sorry is Allah. And when Prophet Yunus realized Allah was trying to teach him a lesson because he shouldn't have left the people of Nineveh, what did he say to Allah? He said, Astaghfirullah. He said, sorry, Allah. And the last thing we should learn is whenever we're in a, stuck in a situation that's really sad, what should we do? We should always say, Astaghfirullah. We should say and pray Allah. to Allah and pray to Allah. We should always pray to Allah because who's the only person that can help you? Allah. Allah. So there's three lessons to learn from Prophet Yunus's story. One, when we mis when we make a mistake, we say Astaghfirullah. We say sorry. Also, never give up. up. And lastly, whenever you're in a situation where you're scared, where you're lost. Well, you don't know what to do. We should always pray to, pray to Allah. That's right. And that is what we learned from Prophet Yunus. I hope you guys enjoyed. To create our craft, you're going to need to cut out a whale shape 
on gray construction paper. Then you will need to cut the bottom of the whale like this. You will need a blue shape cut out this way, one eye, or if you don't have that, you can just draw the eye with a marker. You will need a peg. You will need a small piece of paper, the color doesn't matter, cut out in a rectangular shape, a glue stick, a marker, and some scissors. Now I'm going to show you how to make this. First, you will take the peg and you will glue the sides of the peg. So just like that, you're going to put some glue. You're going to need to use a lot of glue because it'll need to stick very carefully and it's a small amount to stick. So make sure you put as much glue as you can. Then take the top of your whale and stick it down like that on the top of the peg. So it should open up and the bottom of the whale on the bottom of the peg, just like that. Try opening and closing it so that the glue can dry. Okay. Then leave that to dry. The next thing you need to do is take your blue shape and cut some lines to make it look like a blowhole, like water is coming out of the top of the whale. Just like that. You can move it around to give it more of a shape and leave that to sit. On the rectangular piece of paper, you are going to draw prayer hands to show how Prophet Yunus did a lot of dua inside the tummy of the whale. You can draw it however you'd like. You could even write sorry or astaghfirullah if you'd like. And you can leave it just like that. When you feel like your whale has dried sufficiently, you are going to put some glue on the bottom of your blowhole and stick that on the top of your whale. Just like that. You're going to then get your sticky eye and stick that on the whale. If you don't have one, it's okay. You could always just draw the eye on the whale but that will look just like that. There you go. Lastly, you're going to stick your rectangular piece of paper inside the whale. If the longer you can wait for it to dry, the better. So this is gonna stick in the back here on the bottom. So actually what you could do is flip it over, put some glue on the bottom of your piece And then as close to the edge as possible, stick it at the bottom part of the whale, just like that. Let me show you one that is ready. There you go. This is dried. And now when I open the whale, you can see that there's a dua happening inside of the whale. And this will remind you that in any situation you are in, even a situation like being in the stomach of a whale, that you can always pray to Allah and Allah will always listen. You can see I have, it says, it, I'm sorry there. And that is it. Okay, boys, can you tell me what we learned about the story? So in the story, the people, what were they doing to Prophet Yunus? The they, people of Nineveh. They were not listening to him. They were not listening to him. Were they, Amar? And how did that make him feel? Sad. He felt sad. And he said, I'm trying and I'm trying and they're not listening. So off he went and he left Nineveh. And then all of a sudden, what happened? A storm hit. A storm hit and they threw Prophet Yunus into the water, into the sea. And Amar, who gobbled him up? Yeah. Who gobbled Prophet Yunus up? Uh, the whale. The whale. He gobbled Prophet Yunus up. And Prophet Yunus was stuck in the whale and he started to do something very special. He didn't say, oh, why did Allah do this? I'm so angry. I'm so, oh, but he didn't do any of that, did he? What did he do instead? He started to do? Dua. He started to do dua. The most powerful thing we can do. Whenever we're stuck in a situation where we're scared, where we're lost, where we don't know what's happening, 
we can only turn to one person. Who is that person, everybody? Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we can do? Du'a. Du'a. And so Prophet Yunus did du'a. He did lots of du'a until Allah. What did Allah do then, Amar? Do you know? Mm. To Prophet Yunus. What did he do? Mm. He what? told, yeah, what he told he? the whale to spit him out. Exactly. He listened to his du'a and the whale spit him out, didn't he? Yeah. And so Allah shows us that just like he listened to Prophet Yunus's du'a, he listens to all of our du'a, all the du'a of the mu'mineen. So make sure we remember, boys and girls, that whenever you need him, Allah is there. Just do du'a, pray to him, and Allah will always help you if you are sincere in your du'as. All right, it's time to say Fi Aman Allah. You guys ready to sing our Fi Aman Allah song? Can we get our hands ready? If you know the song, sing along. Ready? Fi Aman Allah. Fi Aman Allah. Fi Aman Allah. We've had a lot of fun today. Fi Aman Allah, everybody. And thank you so much for listening. Ramadan, ya Ramadan. Ramadan, ya Let's join Sister Rehana Mauji for today's edition of the Asma ul Husna. Which of the 99 beautiful names of Allah do you think she'll mention in today's edition? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome to our 16th session of Asma ul Husna. Now I'm sure you can all see on the screen what beautiful quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are going to be talking about today. Today's ism is Al-Basir, the All-Seeing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see everything from everywhere all at the same time. You and me, we can only look at one thing or two things at the same time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to have his vision everywhere all at the same time. He is able to see the tiniest of diamonds hidden under the darkest place in the earth. And he's also able to see all the galaxies and the whole world just in one glance. This is the beauty of the vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we as humans, sometimes we spend so long making sure that we look decent in the way we are for people to look at us, for the way people will perceive us. We spend so long in front of the mirror to make sure I look okay from the outside. Now there's nothing wrong with that. Our Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, used to make sure he was immaculately dressed before he went to meet other people. But I need to make sure that that's not my only focus. My main concern should be, how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala see me? How do the eyes of Al-Basir look at me? If I had a mirror, that didn't only show me what I look like on the outside, but showed me what my soul looked like from the inside, would I be happy with that mirror? Would I be happy for people to see that version of me? Well, that's the version that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees. He looks within my soul. He looks within my heart. So I need to make sure that that part of me is pure. I need to make sure that my soul is clean. I need to make sure that my heart is pure. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at. And even though sometimes we make blunders and we make mistakes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at us with the eyes of love. He looks at his creation with the eyes of rahmah. And he tries and covers our faults in the eyes of the people. But us, sometimes we have a habit of looking at people's faults more than their good things. Let me give you an example. If I took you in a room that was beautifully white, the paint on the walls were perfectly white, but there was one black dot on that wall. Tell me honestly, where would your attention go? I'm sure most of us would say our attention would go on that black dot. Why is it there? Rather than looking at the beauty of that white room, our attention would automatically get drawn to the fault. And this is what we do sadly as humans. 
But we need to try and look at the world the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at us. And that is with the eyes of love. I want you to pretend you're wearing a pair of glasses all the time. And these glasses look at the world with love. The lens is with love. And if we start looking at the world like that, our vision changes because we start looking for the good in everything. Whatever situation we may be in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put that situation there for us to learn from. So there is always good in that. There is always beauty and there is always love in that. I want you to remember the famous lines of Sayyidah Zainab salam when she said, Ma ra'aytu illa jamila. After seeing so many tragedies on the day of Ashura, on the plains of Karbala, she is able to say, Ma ra'aytu illa jamila. I saw nothing but beauty. What beauty was that? This was the beauty that she knew. It was the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if this is what he wills, then she will see beauty in that. This should be a lesson for us, that we should be able to look at every situation and every person we come across with the eyes of love. Because none of us are perfect and we're all trying on our journey. So how do I adopt this name of Al-Basir into my life? Again, very easy. I need to be able to look at the world with the lenses of love. Make sure we have those glasses on of looking at everyone and looking at them, their good qualities, their good traits and looking at the world around me with the eyes of love. And secondly, this name should remind me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over me 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. It's like a CCTV camera that catches our every move. So I need to be careful to make sure not to do anything that may displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if I truly love him, I don't want to make him upset. So I need to remember his watchful eye is on me all the time. Be it in the day, be it in the night, be it in a public place or when I'm alone. I need to remember that CCTV camera of Al-Basir. So inshallah join me again tomorrow where we will be looking at a new beautiful name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Till then, practice looking at the world with love. Join me again tomorrow, same time, same place. Assalamu alaikum. It's time to go on a very important journey, back in time to find out about the most wonderful people. Join me for an episode of Our Scholars, Our Stars. I know you will love it just as much as I do. Dynasties have risen and fallen. Some burnt books and destroyed libraries, but the spirit of knowledge was never lost. There were beacons of light to preserve our teachings. Carrying out the missions of the Prophet in guiding people, their status has been elevated, and their names inscribed in the books of history for eternity. More valuable than gold, they are our scholars, and the pillars upon which our understanding of faith stands. They are wonderful for a million reasons, but mostly because they can take us to the land of the ever after, the place we know as heaven. Long ago, there was a great scholar called Sheikh Kashif al who used to collect money to help the poor. One day, the sheikh had given out all the money he had for donations to the poor people. After giving out all his money, a poor man came to the sheikh and asked him for some money. The sheikh was really sorry and felt really bad because he didn't have anything to help the man with. The poor man pulled at the beard of the sheikh and begged him for help. 
The sheikh then turned around and said, If anyone loved the sheikh's beard, which means if anyone respected the sheikh, then they should help this poor man. The people around the sheikh began to fill the sheikh's beard with gold and silver in respect of him. The sheikh used the love that people had for him in service of all the poor people around him. His life was dedicated to helping people, and his commitment to the cause of helping others will never be forgotten, as his stories of charity will continue to live on. So at the end of time, when the day of resurrection approaches, and all those on earth will be subject to questioning. When God Almighty will call upon the scholar and then upon the worshiper, he will tell the worshiper to go to heaven, and he will tell the scholar to take those he or she have trained with them. And like that, even the student will be granted the everlasting reward of paradise for merely following the teachings of a great scholar. Wow, I have learned so much today and I hope you have too. Make sure you don't forget to come back and join us tomorrow for another exciting show. If you'd like to contact us in the meantime, please email us at cabtv at ahlulbayttv. Until then, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.